I did not prep this at all. Ah, <laughs> gosh. Alright, here we go. Ah. Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the stream. There we go. Please go back. Welcome to the stream. Today is the 30th of August 2021. I am your host Beardow and welcome to the Beardow channel. Whether you're on Twitch.tv slash Beardow or YouTube.com slash Beardow. Thank you for follow. Judge Judy CIA. Unless it's a lowercase out. I don't think it's one. Uh, thank you for the follow. Uh, Today is going to be a reasonably exciting stream, and I'm going to kind of jump into it. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to be continuing playing Pokemon Gold, but we're at this fun point where I've got eight badges. I've got about ten trainers? Probably less. Ten trainers. I have 525, 600 trainers <laughs> before... Uh, before we fight the Elite Four and the Champion, and finish the game in some minimal aspect. Uh, there's still a fair bit of post-game, although people kind of overblow the length of it. Like, some people will say it's double the length of, or sorry, the game doubles on in length, and I'm like, yeah, nah, it's not, it's not double. It's probably 50%, but not double. It's not double. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, so in the last, uh, stream, I remember fighting the 8th gym, surprisingly going better than I expected, and then, uh, continuing on a bit down this route, but not, uh, not getting the whole way. I only fought, like, a handful of trainers, so, uh, but that's okay, because there's still, there's still a few trainers, uh, left to fight. I, I think there's maybe... One or two on the first route, and then there's like six after that. So we'll say seven trainers. I wish there was a healing point at some point here, but ah, darn. That's okay. So anyway, uh, time to just continue on and try and recall who I have not fought yet. I'm pretty sure I haven't fought, you know, this person. You shouldn't underestimate the wild Pokemon in these parts, except you can, because the wild Pokemon in these parts are not particularly strong. Except they're kind of strong, actually. They they start to tend around level 30, which isn't too rough. I'm dealing with level 31s. That's that's a little bit tricky, but it's not it's not the absolute worst, so I think this is a job for um Yeah, that's a bit awkward. <laughs> yeah, I, I could set out Chicky. Chick oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Chicky's two levels away from an evolution. Uh, and who else is yet to get an evolution on the team? I guess uh, Growlithe, who is... I'm waiting for Flame Whale. That's level 34. So that's three levels away. I'm probably just going to spam... Uh, um, rare candies on... In fact, I might actually do that right about now. 8,675,309 rare candies. That's too many rare candies, bro. You gotta chill with your rare candies. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, so you use Recover. I'll definitely do a lot. Except Recover is 50% of the health, and I thought Synthesis was that much, but nah. So, who knows, maybe this time he is actually gonna, like, chug me out. Oh well. So, uh, yeah, today is... Reasonably exciting day. It is the last stream of March in March? August. Wow, geez, what time of year is it? <laughs> there we go, that's great. So. so I believe this person has a terrifying thing. Oh my god, Nidoqueen, okay. <laughs> uh Yeah, okay, I don't really know who particularly to go on with. I guess we'll go with Noah, boy. It's ground fight, so. Nidoqueen Queen is a bit scary. Um, but yeah, no, it's the end of August, uh, which means it's the end of uh, winter to some extent, or summer, if you're in the US or anywhere in the north of the, the hemisphere, north of the equator. Um, yeah, it's 
it's a bit of an interesting time, because it's still, like, I'd say it's generally been quite cold all around. It's here in Australia, like, or at least here in Sydney, it's not been particularly warm or hot. I've usually felt that it's picked up pretty quick, like, out of the, out of the solstice kind of, you know, month, maybe month and a half. Um, but... No, it definitely seems to have, like, kept, you know, that below uh, 15 degrees Celsius temperature for a while, which is a bit weird. I'm not a, I'm not too sure what's going on there, but sure. I wish I didn't get paralyzed and lose most of my health, because I would love to continue using No One Boy like this. So No One Boy is level 32, which is pretty cool. Uh, Herc is still pa casually gaining some experience, but yeah, they got a second Sami! That's... Mmm, that's not what I want, but sure. You know, you you do what you do. That's okay. We're going with the bubble beam. Stami is rather quick. Stami is a terrifying like Pokemon to go up against. Because Stami's got like a lot of stuff to like go with. I think what Stami's weak at is that they don't I don't think they have the physical defense. And that puts them at a bit of a vulnerability, uh, off the top of my head, and I'm just gonna confirm that as well. I'm gonna confirm that stat and not just claim. Uh... Both of defense stats are the same. I'd say it's their HP is probably the bit that kind of lets them down a little bit. Um... But I look at those stats and I go, they're very well-rounded with good favorability to speed and special attack. Which is exactly what you want out of a water type, so... I could teach counter. Might as well teach it over Leah. I don't think that's a great place for Leah, but... Circle and counter. Counter's a bit too, you know, specific. I don't really know if there's a great spot for it. Um... So I believe we hit the, uh, the elbow of the stuff, only to then get more trainers. And I don't know if I trust myself to keep fighting more people while... My, uh, my Pokemon's weak, so I think I'm gonna pull the Shrimpy move and fly away after one battle. I know. This is 100% where the game tries to kick your butt. It really knows that, you know, you gotta level up and you gotta be of that caliber. So, uh, but yeah, hitting that elbow, uh, finally hit round 26. Uh, is the Pokemon listing different between... Route, uh... I think it is. It's a little higher level, but generally it's still the same Pokemon available. Yeah, so some of the Pokemon could be up to level 32, which seems kind of interesting. I'm also just going to double check, uh, my box, because I just want to know what, uh, Babat and Fluffer. Babat's yet to love evolve! Yeah! That's one that really blows my mind. I don't know what to do there. Um... Because the worst part is that I know I'm going to need strength. Do you need Rock Smash for the victory road? I don't think you do, actually. Let me just double check as well, because I guess it's not really going to matter now. In fact, actually, yeah. Oh, except I don't... I've got someone with Fly, because I want to fail, so... I don't have a great choice. My only choice, really, is to just evolve Hot Doggo and then get out, like, just, who cares, but I know there's going to be some grass types that I'm probably going to want. Well... No, actually, yeah. Never mind. I'll just commit now, because I know I'm going to need to use this at some point, so... Uh, am I holding on to the rare candies? I'm holding on to one rare candy. I'm pretty sure I've got more than one rare candy, don't I? Maybe. Rage Candy... Rage Candy. I have exactly as many as I need. That's... Uh, like, sure, I guess. Sure. Alright, so... This was not exactly my plan to... Just spam the Rare Candies on Hot Doggo, but... I kinda need it, so... So anyway, at level 34... Growlithe will learn Flame Wheel. Growlithe finally learns 
the first fire type attack, actually the, the second fire type attack that we'll ever learn, Flame Wheel. Because of that, I don't have a fire stone in my inventory. Like, I guess getting to level 34 is like, you know, one half of the problem. The fire stone is the other half. I don't have a fire stone, I didn't even think about this one. Oh gosh. Where do I get a fire stone from? I didn't plan this at all. Oh no, this is terrible. Um... Sea Cottage. That ain't, that ain't soon. More mystery gift. Or Route 36, if I was playing Crystal. I can't get the Firestone until after. Oh, that... Oh. <laughs> okay. So I can't get a Firestone until after I've gone through this. There's no way. I didn't plan for this at all. Done. Oh well. Oh well. Uh, oh, okay, I gotta commit. I gotta commit. So, uh, anyways, yeah, it's it's been a bit of a wild uh, past week yet again. It's always been a bit of a wild past week, but that's okay. I mean, you know, we make we make do. We make bread. Is that the phrase? But you know, th things are always better uh, given discussing them, so that's why I'm really enjoying doing these streams and just kind of venting slightly, even if indirectly about some things, uh, chatting about stuff, taking my mind off things that are not as desirable to think about. Um, that sounds rather dark, but you all know what I mean, like, you know, there's a bit of an escapism in video games, and not only escapism, but also the fact that video games are great fun, and with that, there is a lovely segue to not one, not two, but three wonderful games that I, uh, well actually I didn't beat the third one yet, um, but I've beaten it before and I know how good it is, so, uh, there's three wonderful games that I played over the past, uh, week, and I will love to talk about them. They're all rather different games as well, uh, but they all kind of came out very close to each other in the grand scheme of things. Uh, in reverse chronological order, but also chronological order of when I played them, the first one is Deus Ex Invisible War, the 2003 sequel that people asked for and people did not really want after it came out. Uh, I played it on PC, because playing it on Xbox is... I don't know how well it would run on Xbox. I feel like there's a lot of these games out there that did come out on some console, some variant, but, like, it was very clear that PC was the driving audience for pretty much every console game. Sorry, every, every shooter game. And if it wasn't geared for PC, it wasn't intended to come out on PC. Uh, that was basically the trend then. So, games like Half-Life 2, Doom 3, uh... Did Serious Sam get a console port? I don't think it did. Oh, there was a GameCube version of something, but I don't think that was specifically Serious Sam. Anyway, point is, um, yeah, there's a lot of console... Sorry. Yeah, there's that weird, I guess, like, era of games. Uh, that being said, there's a certain era... Sorry, a certain, I guess, like, hint that maybe they did want it to come to a lot of consoles which explains some of the UI and the reduced mechanics. So Deus Ex is a wonderful game uh, because... Oh no, I'm getting myself absolutely wrecked, but... Oh no, we're okay. Alright, we're good. Uh, he's water poison, so I don't really gain much by... sending Chicky out, apart from maybe dying. This pin missile is a jerk move. And the worst part is I'm gonna need something to take out the Seeking later, because I know he's got a seeking. Oh, why is Quillfish an absolute jerk? That's my fault for sending him out. <laughs> 15 minutes into the stream, I fought one trainer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, so I guess Deus Ex Invisible War, for those who have not played the original Deus Ex, uh, please play it. I really enjoy that game, and 
if you can get past the mechanics after kind of walking through the first level, um, you'll soon uncover that Deus Ex is an amazingly, like, rich game. It's got quirks. I think that the, the actual, like, shooting is a bit weird, and the skill system, like, it's neat, but it also, like, doesn't really require much of the, the player, in the sense that, and I know someone's gonna yell at me on that one, but, like, the, the skill system in Deus Ex is basically, as you go through the game, you get given points, and then you put the points into upgrading skills, but all the skills, like, almost all the skills are purely to, like, give you more proficiency in something, so if it's, like, gun, you know, like, say, oh, uh, more proficiency in small guns. It, uh, purely just means that you'll aim it quicker. Um, maybe sometimes you'll deal a bit more damage, but it's not like you are prevented from killing people or aiming, usually. Um, I think hacking is also one where it's like everyone's got a basic ability to hack, like, terminals to turn off things or to access things. It's purely, like, turning off sentries or turning off robots and there's nothing really that stops you from getting to places because you can't turn off a sentry or a turret. Um, you'll never find a point where the game like flat out requires you to have a skill in something in order to continue. Some of them are useful, other ones you're just like, oh I'll just go somewhere else. So, um, But generally, Deus Ex is really good. It's got a tremendously great fun story. I love the kind of scale of the set pieces as of pretty much every Unreal One Engine game, um, and it's honestly like, yeah, it's it's a great fun experience. The sequel is a like it's a call to the great experience, but it doesn't quite really reach it. It's not a bad game, but it's definitely a game of its time. The game, I mean, I guess the first game is a game of its time, but it's like. Invisible War is definitely a game that feels geared towards a console audience and especially to an audience that may be intimidated by the scale of the original Deus Ex. So I'm going for yet another heal because I've got, you know, 1.8 Pokemon's worth of health loss. Which means I gotta walk it off again. Walk it off. Uh, but yeah, it's... I guess the biggest thing for me now running on the Unreal 2, 2 engine, the biggest thing for me is that the maps felt so much smaller and so much more scaled down, and then on top of that, the mechanics weren't as, like, fleshed out, and the length of the game wasn't as fleshed out. So, uh, instead of like, oh, here's this giant island, and there's like, you know, a cave underneath, and like, all this great stuff, it's kind of like, I don't really need to level up Hot Doggo beyond 34, I could probably bring in gold that, um, I want to get, you know, rectified. Actually, I, yeah, I'm feeling good. Yeah, we'll do a switch tomorrow. Um, yeah, so the maps are considerably smaller. I think some of that is a trade-off of the, uh, Unreal 2 engine, um, although I don't, like, later Unreal 2 games, like Unreal Tournament 2004, I ironically, the arena shooter, Unreal Tournament 2004, has some massive scale maps. I don't know why, uh, this game, uh, Unreal 2, the game, and, um, I'm trying to remember if there was another game that had, like, these very small maps. Maybe I'm just thinking Quake. Quake was kind of like that. Um, But yeah, like, the, the detail in the maps was there compared to the first game, but the, like, the scope was definitely something where it's like, I wouldn't trade the, the scale of the first game, like, their maps, as hard as, as I would for some detail. And even then, the detail, like, it's a bit superficial at times. It's like, yeah, okay, this box is a bit more detailed, this person is a bit more detailed, but like... It just, it doesn't feel like I'm interacting with a larger world, it feels like I'm interacting with a game that came out much more recently, and that was it. Um... So, and in doing that, you end up getting more loading screens. Deus Ex Invisible War has one of the most awkward systems that I've... I've seen when it comes to loading, and that is, uh... There's a background process that kind of orchestrates, like, you know, what map is being loaded, uh, and then the main renderer game is spawned every single time you do a map load. This includes loading saves. 
Uh, that means if you're streaming the game to Discord, Discord gets a different process ID every single time you want to stream the, ga the, the game, which means every time you load a map, your process stopped, and therefore Discord thinks you stopped. I assume streaming to OBS is probably the same deal. Um, it's, it's a bit of a pain. Um, and granted, like, yeah, I guess streaming to Discord isn't really something they intended at the time, uh, but even then, to a today's computer, it's like, okay, well, the game constantly keeps, like, stopping and starting, and it takes its time, like, loading a save. Um, and it's just like, it, it feels like needless headache for something that, like, either you've circumvented, uh, you know, a memory leak by just killing the game and starting it back up again, or... You've done something very weird, I don't really know why. And I don't know any other Unreal 2 games that have the need to do that. Liz! This is Liz, well you wait, do you want to battle? I'm going to win this time, I'll be waiting for you around Route 32, look for me, see ya! Cool. Cool. Is there an item here, or is this... that's just here? Okay, sure. Like, I guess you can, you know, take the... the path less travel to... Ignore the trainers, but... See how the Sand Slash here? Sand Slash level 28? Only level 28. Interesting. Uh... I guess on the, on the topic of, um... Uh, I guess scale down mechanics, the other thing with Deus Ex Invisible War is that the... I guess... The inventory system is scaled down, so instead of having, uh, like, you know, a, a grid-based inventory and you have items that take up a certain amount of grid space, uh, like System Shock 2, every single item takes one space and your inventory is actually incredibly small until you realize that you don't need to be carrying anything in the game. You have a, and so items will stack, uh, so like medkits and, and food and like energy packs, they'll all stack, that's fine. Um, and then your weapons fill those spots, but it's like because the weapons fill one spot each, I kind of felt like, okay, well all my quick slot weapons or items are just weapons. And then med kits, energy packs, like two grenade types and lock picks were like my other items and that kind of was it. I didn't really feel the need to mess around with the inventory much more. Um, I wonder if that's like an intentional system, but it did mean that I was picking up a lot of things and then just ignoring some other things and that was it. Um, the augment system, instead of finding these canisters and like, well it's kind of the same. It is actually kind of the same. You've got your, your augment slots and then in those slots you can uh, equip uh, specific augments. So it means that you, you, know, you can't have both running fast and sneaking. You have to pick one or the other. Um, they still have that, and then as you gain more augments in the s well, as you gain more augments, you're able to, um, uh, you're able to upgrade those, um, but there's not really anything, like, sorry, like, the augments don't, aren't, sorry, the augments you pick up are not specific to slots, which means you're able to upgrade whichever one you actually feel like at any point in time. That's not too bad, but I actually found, like, felt that they gave so many at the beginning of the game that I'm not actually going to get wrecked by a wild ponytail. I'm getting wrecked by a wild ponytail. Don't do this to me. Don't do this. Don't do this. It's illegal. It's illegal. That's illegal. Can't believe it. I'm actually getting wrecked by a wild ponytail. <sighs> oh well. I forgot if there's a guy who heals here. I think there is. Well, at least Herc is level 28. I think there's one more trainer before I get there though. Oh no, they're there! Cool, okay. Okay, we've hit a checkpoint. We've hit a checkpoint, everyone. Don't worry. I can properly heal. There, your Pokemon are looking good. Keep at it. There we go. Uh, no, um... No PCs, so I can't swap out. Uh, but... In theory, I can keep committing, at least. 
Since you've come this far, you must be good. I'm going to give this bow everything I've got. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Sure. Cool. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so... Yeah, I, I felt like they gave too many augments at the beginning of the game, and then by the end of the game, I actually felt like I was sitting on spare augments, and I just didn't know where to equip them, if at all. So I gave up. I was just like, I'm not equipping anything. I've maxed out my skills. I don't have any need to replace my skills with other ones from, you know, from grand level. So, yeah, that was kind of that. Um, but as much as I've been kind of, you know, crapping on the game, that's not half bad. The gunplay is more responsive. It's easier to get into. I definitely agree. Um, the sniper rifle that they give you early on is way too good. It's way too good. I picked it up and I never really used any other weapon. And because of universal ammo, there is no need to even try to use any other weapon. Um, I need Chicky to gain some experience. Jeez, Chicky has taken, taken his time, bro. Because he's still level 30. Alright, look at this. Blastoise. Easy peasy. Right there. Lemon squeezy. Go get him. Dun, 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 dun. Chicky needs another revolution. <laughs> Chicky and Golbat need another revolution. And maybe Growlithe. Growlithe needs one, but... I can't do anything about Growlithe. That's, that's such a shame. I can't get over that. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it actually, it's not too bad. I don't mind, like, where it takes you. I think that there's still that element of Deus Ex still in it. Um, like, as much as I'll talk about it simplifies mechanics, it's also, like, it's got that layer of, like, okay, it's, you know, it's got the conspiratorial story, it's got the, you know, the multiple factions that don't have, like, one, one good side. It's got the ability to try and take things from multiple angles, even if it means that the maps are basically littered in... Uh, air vents. Uh, it, it, it does have a bit of that going on, uh, but yeah, in general, it's not half bad. Um, yeah, the music isn't as amazing, I guess, as that as well. I, everything is definitely like, if you can, if you leave it on its own, it's an alright game from 2003. If you compare it to Deus Ex, it has some massive shoes to fill, and it doesn't fill them. Which, yeah, it's. It's something... Oh, hello. There's something written here. Read it? Yeah. To my brothers and sisters, we take pride in serving Pokemon trainers. When trainers talk to you, give them something useful. Love, Monica. Monday, Monica, Route 40. Tuesday, Tuscany, Route 29. Wednesday, Wesley. Wesley, uh, Lake of Rage. Thursday, Arthur, Route 36. Friday, Frida, Route 32. Saturday, Santos, Blackland City. Sunday, Sunny, Route 37. So yeah, so for reference, those are the uh, seven people who are... Well, they'll appear somewhere... Uh, depending on the day of the week. Um, currently, because it's Monday, uh, there's the one person on Route 40, but because it's always Monday when I stream, that's the only person there. So, uh, yeah, no, that's fun. Um, gonna continue walking around, and... I love this, like, you know, this stuff here, but... Yeah, other than that, um, yeah, Deus Ex Invisible War. It took me seven and a half hours. I played on the hard difficulty. I didn't really have too much trouble, but I definitely did save scum some bits. Like, my character would sometimes die a little too quickly for me to really anticipate. But generally, it was pretty alright. I didn't have any trouble really playing it. Uh, running on Windows 10 uh, only had one quirk, which was um, getting a kind of resolution thing working, because having the game constantly switch my resolution uh, meant a bit of headache. By experiencing tough battles, you gain power. Do I? <sighs> cool. And speaking of cool, cool, trying to Gavin! So Gavin's got a victory bell. That's why we mean serious business. Uh, we're going with a wing attack. We're going in there. I appreciate in the, uh, in the anime, um, James having the, uh, the weeping bell constantly, like, I was, <laughs> I was gonna say suck him, but you know what I mean, like, constantly try to eat him, and then it didn't it evolve into a victory bell, and then it still continued to do that. Like, I appreciate they could keep the gag. I will say, Babat does a really good job despite being still, you know, not fully evolved. 
Pingla. Okay, this is this is Chicky's time to maybe shine. Dude, Kingla's got such a great sprite in this game. I don't care. Um, but yeah, no, didn't didn't take me too long. Uh, didn't wasn't too hard to like set up. Um, it was pretty all right. So I'd give it a maybe recommend, but I'd definitely say it's probably something that you can easily get in a sale and not really actively get in full price. And if you haven't played the original, play the original. It's a much more superior version of the same game. I, I think that's the biggest thing as well, is that Invisible War doesn't try beyond what the original game did. And that's that's actually a bit of a bit of a hindrance. Like releasing a sequel that kind of resteps the same, you know, ideas of the first game. It does lead into an identity crisis. Uh, do I ditch Synthesis? I think I will, actually. I don't trust Synthesis to really, like, carry me through anymore. Uh, so we'll go with Body Slam, which is a, a good attack. I don't, I don't mind Body Slam. And uh, lastly, we get a Flareon. So, uh, off to the rafters, and we'll go for No One Boy here. No One Boy. Ah. This is this is not a particularly favorable uh, usage of surf. There we go. Um, yeah, game number two on the list. Uh, we'll go back two years and to a different console. This the game I played was a game I don't know if anyone really knows of, and if you do know of it, congrats, because I didn't know of it. Uh, the game is called World's Scariest Police Chasers for the PS1. I assume there was a TV show called World's Scariest Police Chasers. It had that vibe that, I mean, it was published by Fox, uh, Fox Interactive, so I'd imagine maybe it, there's a TV show of it. Um, but, uh, the gimmick of the game, I guess, is that you are a police officer and you are on scary chases. You chase uh, criminals and you stop them via some means and most of those means in the story mode end up being shoot the heck out of whatever they were driving because they ain't stopping um, so it's the concept is there it took probably about four and a half hours for the the main missions there's not really much to do outside of the missions um, but it definitely was a, it's an interesting game. So yeah, there's not really a ton to say, uh, but it's definitely, it's a very late PS1 game. Uh, like, like 2001 is like, okay, the PS2 is out. And I think there is a PS2 version of this game, so maybe I did just play the inferior version. Uh, by the way, Parasect, Bug Grass. This is gonna do tons of damage. I just, I just love this type combination of Bug Grass, because it's just, you open yourself up way too much, there's too many flying types in the game to, like, you know, not have that happen to you. Um, and then Golduck, so, we'll switch back to Chicky. Chicky's one level away. I can 100% force Chicky to level up, uh, given, or to evolve, given, uh, the wild Pokemon coming up, because we've got Victory Road coming up, which means great battle, uh, which means lots of, uh, lots of ground types. You got Gravelers, you got um, Donphan if you're playing Silver, you got Onyx, you got Rhyhorn. Um, I think that's a 50% chance of finding something that's, you know, weak to grass in some extent. Uh, there's still a 30% chance of Gold Bat, which is not great, and a uh, 20% chance in uh, Pokemon Gold to come up against an Ursaring, which is actually kind of an interesting one. But we're not in that route yet, so can't predict it. Can't, can't anticipate going there yet. Chicky, don't die on me. Don't die on me. <laughs> I'm not gonna appreciate it. Do not. Do not do this. Okay. Fine. We're cool. <laughs> I'm not feeling very confident for what's happening after this. Considering every single one of these trainers, I am like, yep, nope, back to the healing. Back to the healing board. There's a person to heal right here, but they're very late, aren't they? Like, there's about 10 trainers before, and 4 trainers after. 
Like that, I, I'm not even joking, there is one singular trainer before the cave. It's, it's, it's just... Oh my gosh, so... I think Ampharos is not particularly high level. They're only 31, which actually puts them, like, nearly on par with everyone else. Uh, but yeah, that's the last trainer. So... Max Elixir. Elixirs are probably going to be useful in the Elite Four if I'm taking my time, because... I'm not going to be able to, you know... Have enough moves by the end. I lost to a trainer named Neville. He was really strong, but it was as if he had absolute... Sorry, it, as, it was as if he had absolutely... Blah. Okay, I felt sorry for... I can't read today, apparently. Jeez. Um, yeah, the world's scariest police chase this game. Like, on the surface, it sounds very simple, and it kind of is, but the missions were very bizarre. Like, it, it started off pretty easy. It's like, oh, here's, like, a, you know, a crazy drunk driver. Here's, um, you know, a guy who robbed the store. Like, that kind of stuff. And then it, it gets to, like, weird stuff. Like, here's a, a serial killer who's put bombs around the city. It's like, okay, okay. Here's a guy who, um, uh, like, sets up... <laughs> like, an ambush for the police, and then you just have to run away and, like, get back up from your police officers. And then here's one where, like, a pair of brothers steal a tank. And you're just like, oh, okay, sure. Alright, so, I guess the good news about Victory Road here is that there are no trainers, and I don't even think you need any HMs. I think you can just literally walk through. The downside is that I have the feeling I'm probably going to want to carry one Saving Grace Pokemon on my side. So, I'm going to fly back. I know, I know. Uh, to Flash Fly. I need Surfer Bro. I need someone with Waterfall in order to get here. So I'm going to have to have Surfer Bro sitting in my party. Uh, I guess the trade-off is, yeah, who do I not, like, leave in my party? I'm thinking that, like... Uh, yeah, I'm thinking I can definitely put away Flashfly. And then... Uh... I'm probably gonna bring... Hmm... Because, yeah, I, w I probably want Fluffer. I probably want Fluffer. I think the stats are gonna play in my favor. As much as, like, you know, as much as uh, the juicer, sorry, not the juicer, well, the one, the juicer, yeah. Uh, but also, Hot Doggo is higher level. I don't think Hot Doggo has the stats to back it up as hard. Um, after this guy, like, I will start using my full team of six, because it doesn't matter at that point. Like, I'm at the end place. But, yeah, until then, I've just got to go right in, so. Uh, if I fail, by the way, I'm thinking... Actually, no, I'm probably gonna save up the top, and then just come back down if I need to. Uh, but yeah, no, it... the game gets kind of crazy. I, uh, do appreciate the weapon variety, even if it's a car-driving game. It's a little weird to control, I'll definitely say that. Uh, but the one, the one really impressive thing, and this is the part that I'm surprised about, is that it's a PS1 game with a surprisingly large, free-loading open world. It's got an open world mode, and all the missions take place in the open world. It's very, like, it predates GTA 3 by at least half a year, and it's... Like, it does so... It kind of looks like butt at a distance. Like, the LOD swapping is pretty clear on the PS1. But, like, what they've tried to achieve is actually not too shabby. I I actually admire it a fair bit. So, yeah, that's alright. Um, It's definitely a game to play and not to, like, to complete. Uh, you'll probably play through all the missions and then go, I really don't want to play, like, most of those again to get the... The, um, the commendation medals, because all that involves is you either not taking damage or doing things quickly or not messing with your gun. And at what point that is, I don't think anyone really has figured that out, because it's world's scariest police chases on the PS1. It's not, it's not anything people would, like, actively try and play a ton, but 
Um, but no, it actually isn't too bad of a game. So I'd actually say it's, give it a, give it a go if you're bored and somehow find a copy somewhere. Um, yeah, no, it's pretty alright. Uh, last game on the list of games that I've played over the past week, I didn't quite get to finish this one, but I have played it before, and on top of that, I feel like I can actually maybe, maybe kind of speedrun that. I don't feel very confident to go close to records on it, but definitely close enough to go, hey, give me, like, three hours? I will aim to try and beat three hours. Uh, this is Rayman 2. I have figured out how to get it running on my PC, uh, with the joys of DG Voodoo and, um, I guess equipping things in the, you know, putting things in the right, uh, configs. Uh, and also kind of embracing the keyboard controls, because I sometimes get a little antsy about, like, playing console... Well, not, it's not a console platformer. Uh, so for reference, if you don't have eight badges, this guy tells you off. Uh, even though you did need Waterfall, but it's just to stop people. Also, there's two parts to the side. This way, there's the Mount Silver. You'll see scary strong Pokemon out there. And then this guy's like... Off to the Pokemon League, are you? The Elite Four are so strong, it's scary, and they're ready for you. It's scary either way, apparently. Anyway, head north, and we are in Victory Road. The music is, like, jamming here. You know, unless you ride a bike. Uh, but yeah, no. Victory Road is home to Rhyhorn. I should, oh, I should actually send, um, yeah, I, sh I should legitimately put, um, uh, Bayleaf. <laughs> I don't know why the name has escaped me. Why has my nickname that I've given to Bayleaf escaped me? Chicky. There we go. I don't know why. Why does that Chicky has less health than... Everyone else in my party? That's a bit crazy. I, I chalk it up to the evolution, but I also am surprised that even Golbat has more health. Look at Earth Ring right here, man. I'm not gonna bother fighting the Earth Rings, because it's not worth. Uh, but yeah, no, there's a few items lingering in the cave that are definitely worth picking up. Um, and, uh, yeah, by the way, the Onyxes can be up to level 36, and it is at this point that, uh, you should go, Hey, I can, I can definitely grind up, and this is, this is the place to do it. The Wild Pokemon are at least level 32, there's nothing after this, there's nothing higher level, and there's a lot of rock types, which means that if you've got a grass or a water type, feel free to just go right in, just have a field day with taking them out. That's all you need. Uh, I have five viewers. When did that happen? Okay. <laughs> um, the number is different. The Twitch view count, it updates differently. On one screen I've got five, on another I've got three. I don't know, maybe it'll be three in like two seconds. Ah, uh, but you can't- no, no, not allow that. Too many items. What do I not need? Like, just sitting here. I will never use a dire hit. I will never use a dire hit. I'm. I've never found a huge need for a dire hit unless it's like okay, they're like defense spamming. But I've I've never had like that ever be a, an issue to like, you know, spend a turn to drop an item on, just to like guarantee a crit. Yeah, this is the one I'm a little concerned about, and that's the gold bats are quick. They're only going to be level 32, but if Chicky's not fast enough, it can be a bit of an issue. Well, unless I spam Confuse Ray, in which case it's not going to be an issue at all. Uh, is this... Oh, okay. I thought that was the rock. We got more Onyx. Given them the level 36, so definitely they're going to town. Uh, but yeah, no, so I played uh, Rayman 2. I absolutely love Rayman 2. I did a let's play of Rayman 2 on the PS2, which is not quite the same game as the one that I'm playing 
uh, on PC, and the one that you may have played on the N64 or the Dreamcast, uh, if you have played those versions. Um, or I guess the DS or iOS or the 3DS, because they're all technically based off those other versions, so there is that. Um, but, uh, it's... No, it's a solid game. If if there's one thing I absolutely love about platformers now, it's how many platformers have so much I so many ideas and so much variety. Like that's something that makes a lot of platformers really special. And uh, Rayman 2 is a remarkably good game at being that for um, you know for so many levels. It's still got you know some repeating mechanics here and there, but it's like uh, like I played. You know, like, every, the Cave of Bad Dreams is, is a level that just invents things and then never really comes back. The, uh, the, uh, Marsh of Awakening, where you gotta, you know, ride Sam down the, the bit, you know, that, that's its own thing. The flying shell bits don't happen in too many levels, actually. I, I can't think of too many. Uh, everyone remembers the precipice if you play the game, um... Every level just seems to, like, keep creating, um... The... Oh, what's the level? The, um, Sanctuary of Stone and Fire. It's like, it's the only level, at least so far off the top of my head, because I'm a few levels sh short of the end, trying to recall. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it's the only level where you do the riding on plums. It just exists in that one bit. There's some levels with plums, there's definitely that, but riding on them over lava only happens then. Uh, and... Yeah, like, I think it... it it was probably a bit earlier in terms of 3D platformers, and so some of the mechanics didn't really, you know, hit as hard as, as others, but I think what Rayman 2 does is that it fires so much that you kind of forget that, like, you know, I guess, like, the scale of it, the scope of it, it really tries a lot. Um, and so I, I kind of admire it for that. And uh, just to, like, you know, double up on that, I think the level design is very nice and flowing. It's pretty smart in how it, like, guides you towards where you need to go. Uh, you can head right and up, by the way, if you want to, um, reach the end right away. Um, but there is some, some joy to getting some more items. And, uh, you're probably going to be, you know, kicking yourself if you miss some of these items as well. Chicky's probably gonna evolve after this. Oh, uh, maybe maybe one more. Maybe one more wild Pokemon. Yeah, maybe I should have been fighting wild Pokemon. I don't know. Maybe that's the bit that's caught me out. Is that I've been running away from wild Pokemon too much. So yeah, if if I'm too low level for the Elite Four, by the way, because like Level 32. Okay, I'm taking a huge step in the dark on this one. Um, then this will be the perfect place to grind, and I don't imagine it would take too long. To oh, how much experience is left, bro? How much experience? Is that one singular experience? It's six singular experiences. Also, 27015. That is not my trainer ID in any way. <laughs> Uh, but no, yeah, I, I, I'm absolutely having a, having a blast playing through Rayman 2 again. I would highly urge people to play it. It's on GOG, uh, the original, so that's fine. Um, I actually, I own it on Steam because they gave it as a pre-order bonus for, uh, Rayman Origins. And Rayman Origins came out very late on, uh, PC. So, I think it was pretty obvious that it was going to be a good game. Just for people to, you know, before they go, oh, you said, like, no pre-orders, and then suddenly you do that. Uh, what? Chicky is evolving? <gasps> and congrats! We have finally seen, in Victory Road, the final evolution, Meganium. Meganium is amazing. I love Meganium. It's great. Uh, I guess I can flex Meganium in one case. Actually, I could continue having Meganium sitting out here. So Meganium's got at least a bit more health, uh, but also, I guess, the stats are pretty good, so... I should probably do a stats comparison. I don't know if uh, I had the stats on screen, so you couldn't do it before or after just then. 
Uh, but, uh, yeah, so let's, let's go stats. Uh, yeah, Meganium is still, like, you know, a bit more bulky, I'll definitely say that. Um, doesn't have the HP compared to, I guess, any of the other Pokemon on my party, jeez. Like, I think Herc is gonna be, gonna have more, more health by the end, but, at least for defense. 83 and 79 is actually not too shabby, uh, considering, yeah, Quagsire's got health, but Quagsire, you know, doesn't have that defense and special defense. That being said, Quagsire has the attack, so I think that makes Quagsire a bit more useful in that regard. Uh, Heracross is obviously going to kick people's butts, uh, because those stats are pretty good. Like, 62 defense and 71 special defense puts him <laughs> pretty on par with Quagsire right here. And his speed is 64, which I think still makes him the fastest of these three. Oh no, Meganium is faster right now. I think we'll be on par, because he's two levels short. But that attack stat is going to be pretty killer. Uh, you are not on my team. Um, Babad is definitely the fastest. The rest of his stats are a bit more middle of the road right now. But he's yet to get an evolution, so who knows. And Fluffer is uh, not particularly fast, but that special attack is going to be very useful for... For getting through things. I think uh, I'm relying on Growlithe being a bit more of the, the physical attacker of my party. Um, or, or Heracross. Probably Heracross. I think I'm probably going to look for Growlithe to be the type coverage. Um, uh, Babat will be a bit of the sweeper. Fluffer will be the, uh, the special attacker. Maybe not the sweeper that I want, but you know, we'll go with that. Magani will be a bit more bulky. Quagsire will be a bit more bulky. It's at least kind of rounded. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I'm not gonna say that I've got a great plan, but I've got something. Ah, oh, no, 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 no full restore. Well, okay. I know I'm going to need to be holding on to as many full restores. Ah, oh, sup, Hamdrill? How's it going? Uh, by the way, I love how you get Moonstones, but Fire, Firestone? Nah, nah, no Firestones. Um, I don't know why I'm looking through my inventory, going for like, like, am I gonna get frozen? Probably, but... <laughs> uh, oh. I think I'm gonna commit now. I think I'm gonna commit now on, on doing the fight. This is gonna be terrifying, man. So, this is your first kind of taste as to how much your butt's gonna get kicked for Victory Road. Uh... Who do I go up against this with? Just to start off. Because I don't actually have a, uh, a fighting type attack on Heracross. I've got counter, but... Yeah, uh, for reference, Surfer Bro here is not supposed to be on the team. There's a level 34 Growlithe in the box. I just needed something to have Waterfall. Um... I think I'll be okay to fight, uh fight the rival here, but I don't know if I'm alright to go up against the league immediately after. Oh man, Aragross is nice. I like Ampharos too. I just prefer Feraligatr over Meganium. Yeah. Honestly, like, Feraligatr and Typhlosion are pretty good. Meganium hits this kind of weird point where, like, they're supposed to be bulky, but the moveset isn't quite there. Don't make me laugh. You're so much weaker than I am. I'm not like I was before. I now have the best and strongest Pokemon with me. I'm invincible. I challenge you. So, it's gonna come kick my butt. Uh, but, at the very least, like, you, you fight him and you go, Oh, there's no way that I'm gonna fight him again. Except they did that in, <laughs> in first gen, didn't they? You had to fight your rival right before you got to Victory Road. And then he ended up being there at the end anyways. So, uh, so yeah, so his first Pokemon is Sneasel, the level 34, those Quick Attack, Screech, Feint Attack, and Fury Cutter. I guess if you've got, uh, generally good moves, you shouldn't really have anything to worry about. In fact, I don't think, <laughs> like, if, if Fury Cutter is the move that they determined to be the strongest in that case, that's, that's got nothing to fear about, so. Herc's gonna do good stuff. In fact, I think Herc's actually probably got a bit of wiggle room for... No. No, actually, no. I'm, I'm looking at the rest of them, I'm going, nah. Every single other Pokemon on this team is going to kick Herc's butt in some way. So, anyway, we got Golbat next. So, this is going to be a perfect opportunity for Fluffer to kick in. 
Uh, this Golbat is level 36, so we're starting to get into those higher amounts. Uh, Wing Attack, Confuse Ray, Bite, Leech Life. It is the same moveset that I think every single Golbat knows in this game, including mine. I, I actually think my Golbat has the exact same moveset. We got the punch, though. The punch! Oh, that's a good punch. And the best part about being confused is that, yeah, I hit myself, but it's only physical damage. So it's actually not going to be as strong as uh, it probably could be. I think it's sad that I don't want to get caught into it for too long. Or flinch. Okay, alright, we're okay. That's, uh, that's all I really needed Fluffer to do, so... I'm feeling okay there. Good on him. Uh, now Neville's about to use Magneton. Uh, this is where I go out with the joys of No Arm Boy. I absolutely love, I love Quagsire as just like, Oh, you have an electric type? I don't care. <laughs> and the bonus points. So his moveset is Sonic Boom, Thunder Wave, Super Sonic, Thunder Shock. Thunder Wave, like, is, he's probably gonna pull it off. He's probably gonna go with, oh no, he's going with Sonic Boom. Sonic Boom does a flat 20 damage. Here's my high HP Pokemon. It doesn't matter as much. I was thinking I was going to use Thunder Wave to try and like get me to attack less, but the other benefit of Thunder Wave is that it's, you know, your opponent's speed is hard, but, you know, no one boy. Why is he faster? What? <laughs> okay, never mind, he should have used it. Okay. He's not going to use Thunder Shock, he's got no, no, uh, you know, no purpose in using that. Um, so. I do need to keep Noam Boy kind of alive though, because you can tell what uh what he's gonna come out with afterwards, but other than that, it's pretty alright. I think his team is exactly the same minus the starter, no matter who uh, who you're up against as well. So that's actually pretty okay. Anyway, Hurt Brew to level 31. Now he's about to use Kadabra. Kadabra is gonna be a finicky one for me. I can't use Herc. Because fighting, and I can't use Babat because poison. Um, so I actually think this is probably the best spot for Chicky, because Chicky is a raw grass type. Which actually, like, there's so many grass starters throughout the rest of Pokemon. Well, maybe not the rest of Pokemon. But there's a lot of grass poison types in first gen. Um, it's definitely got uh, one iffy move. Uh, that was exactly what I was about to suggest, because it's bulky. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's gonna keep using Future Sight, sure. Um... But, uh, yeah, so Kadabra's moveset, level 35, has Recover, Future Sight, Disable, and Psybeam. That does mean there's really only one attack that will particularly ruin your day, and that's Psybeam. Uh, which... Does Psybeam do the, uh, the fancy effect in this game? Oh, wait, no, sorry. What am I thinking? I'm thinking Psy Wave. Psy Beam is just 10% chance of confusing. It's just a pretty standard attack. Uh, Future Sight is literally, like, uh, two turns later it's supposed to do damage, but it doesn't seem to really be doing it, so. Uh, now here comes the big guns, Typhlosion, so I'm hoping that no one boy can survive this. And if not, then I've at least got, uh, two Pokemon that aren't gonna get swept by him. So, uh, Typhlosion here, there's the future site. Yeah. That's not the worst, but I'll definitely probably rely on an attack, yeah. Um, so the Typhlosion here, you know, Smokescreen, he's also got Ember, Quick Attack, and Flame Wheel. Flame Wheel may ruin my day a little bit. I'm thinking I probably need a healing item, actually. He is level 38, so he's definitely got a bit of a stat punch, but I don't think he's, like, he's not quite, like, in the club of, like, completely ruining my day. Because he can't, he can't get around the stats of No One Boy right here. Um, I think he probably is gonna, like, best him otherwise, so I'm gonna go on the safe side. I don't have any other healing items other than the Max Potion. Well, that's a bit of a waste, but, oh well. I'm, I've got plenty of money, I'm gonna be buying some stuff for the Blade 4. Yeah, okay. He's gonna keep you. Well, that's okay. 
Uh, but yeah, no, he they come at you with a six-person team, but you gotta be ready for this kind of stuff, so... Yeah. Uh, so here's something I actually found out about the game. Uh, there's... So every time you get a badge in this game, uh, you get... Um, well, m not every time you get a badge, but s some of the badges in this game will give you a boost to a certain stat. That boost is uh, an increase by 12.5%. That is the same as in first gen. Uh, so the Zephyr badge gives you 12.5% more attack. Uh, it says the mineral badge is uh, defense. The Glacier badge does both special attack and special defense, except it kind of doesn't do special defense apparently, but I don't know. Uh, and then the Plane badge does speed. So you're getting 12.5% stat buff on everything by the time you're at this point in the game. On top of that, and this is a bit of an interesting one, but I'll, I'll actually, I'll append that for a little bit. Uh, we've got Haunter here. Haunter is Ghost Poison. Uh, not particularly sure who on my team would be necessarily the best against Ghost Poison, but I guess not Herc. And, uh... I haven't shown Babat, and I guess I could just use Babat. Yeah, we'll just use Babat. Why not? If he dies, then... Darn. Uh... Wait, I can use Bite. I don't know why I'm going like, oh, I don't have anything. Uh, he's got Shadow Ball, which is a bit of a mean attack, but it's not too bad, actually. Uh, he's also got Curse, Mean Look, and Confuse Ray. It's... Surprising that he hasn't actually evolved this Haunter, but okay. Um, but now, yeah, so here's the interesting thing. According to Bulbapedia, and nothing in the game tells you this, every single badge you earn gives you an additional 12.5% uh, boost to the power of moves by the type of that gym. Which means after that first gym, which is a flying type gym, all of your flying type attacks do 12.5% more damage. Uh, this continues on with the eventual post game that's just disappointing that's just disappointing i'm not i'm not com committing except he did use mean look i can't switch out can i i don't want him to die i want him to have that happiness so that i can you know so he can evolve bro just use curse and get it over with okay I understand horns is fast, but it's just like... <laughs> oh well. Uh, but yeah, so that actually means that 8 of my types actually do 12.5% more damage than they should. Uh, that would mean flying, bug, normal, uh, ghost, fighting, steel, ice, and dragon. It's a very specific range of types, but I think the most important one there is, uh, normal, because that means, hey, any Pokemon with strength actually was pretty okay. Uh, anyways, this guy gets really upset, man. He just goes, eh, see ya. So, that actually wasn't the worst, but, yeah. Um, anyways, reach inside and you finally hit the Pokemon League. Where? Finally. You know, healing. And using a using a box, so I can finally. I was gonna say bring out. Yeah, I'll bring out the loss of my team. Uh, but yeah, no. At this point, this is where you can go. Oh, okay, I'm committing. Oh, you're challenging the leech for. Are you sure you're right? My Abra can help you. It can teleport you home. It's a pretty useless teleport, to be honest. But yeah, no. If you if you do want to go back to New Bark Town, for some reason without having anyone who knows fly. I guess because you can trade here, can't you? So... I guess it's that. Anyways, I don't need Surfer Bro because I can just fly here if I really wanted to. Uh, but... Let's get Hot Doggo out. And then, uh... Do I try and go for one level on uh, Golbat and see if Golbat can evolve? Oh, gosh, I gotta put some stuff away. <laughs> Gen 2 is the best because it has uh, maps and Pokemon from both generations. Yeah, definitely. It's I, I really love the um, the mix of the Pokemon from the, you know, from the first game. And actually, that's something so understated, is that they've got so many of the old Pokemon mixed in really, like, flawlessly with how... Uh, the new ones go. Put him uh, at least level 40 to Elite 4, that's probably good. 
I think level 40 may be overkill. I actually think 35 is probably a safe point. Um, and that's purely because, that's purely because they're uh, effort value trained and I've got those, you know, benefits from having all the badges. Um, I think that there's merit to having all that. Um, am I 100% confident on that? Not particularly, but... Um, you know, I'm definitely confident enough to... Uh, it's going to I can't recall. Uh, the very, very first one uh, goes up to level 42. And then it's just every two levels from there. So there, there will be a level 50 in the end. Now, usually... I do a very dumb thing, and I, uh, waste all my money on full restores, and, uh, revives. That's usually, that's usually my strat. I know I'm gonna spam them, so I just buy, like, 30 of each. And that, get, that gets me through. If I'm, like, if I'm spamming full restores too much, I know I'm not even gonna, like, possibly make it, so... Uh, so I'm going to take that off, and I'm just going to, like, give it to Babat, and I just want to see what happens if Babat gets another level. Uh... And then, other than that, I'm going to fend for myself, trying to get to this Elite Four. That would be silly if I actually do make it. Uh, I've got... Uh, the wrong person up front. I don't know if he could take Raihorn. Probably not, because... He's probably going to use Earthquake. Uh, we'll put Chicky. Chicky up the front. Uh... Yeah, oh, yeah, I, I, I think the goal bet levels with friendship, but I, I don't know his friendship right now, like... I, I swear, like, there's been times I've played Pokémon in the past, and, like, my goal bet's evolved at level, like, 27. He's level 32 now. He's really taking his time. So... I'm just hoping that, like, okay, at some point between 32 and now, he's gotten, uh... Uh, I also think this is fun, that the adventure ends just like summer. Yeah, it's kinda neat. Uh, there's a little hole here, by the way, as well, which, uh, this is an item I didn't pick up, and it's one you should pick up, because that's Earthquake. And I forgot who I wanted to teach Earthquake to, because I realized, yeah, that Earthquake is a hilariously fun move to chuck in. Um... So yeah, I'll, I'll just kind of walk back and forth for a little bit while I try and figure out who I was supposed to teach Earthquake to. I'll kick this Earth Ring's butt just for the sake of it. Um... Yeah. Uh, for you guys who haven't joined as well, I've got a Growlithe on my team and I realized way too late that there's no Firestones available to pick up until after... Um... After I, I do this, the only... Firestone you can actively pick up. In fact, the only one in the whole game is, uh, where Bill's house is. <laughs> I don't think I can beat this Earth Ring <laughs> just by, like, sitting there with Chicky. This is actually one where I'll, I'll send out Herc. Uh, Polo is flying away and taking Summer with it. Yeah! Oh yeah, that's one actually I forgot I even haven't even done, but I haven't gone and caught ho -Oh. I think I was gonna, like, do that at the beginning of the last stream. Or rather, two streams ago. I think I kind of hinted that I would have done it, and then I didn't. <laughs> I do eventually want to do it. I don't know. Uh, how much damage does Counter do? Uh, Counter, it's gotta attack me first, and then it does double damage. And... that's great. Uh, it is super effective, but I don't know if super effective actually applies in this case. He's fainted a lot, but I've tried to make sure he hasn't. So I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't think he's fainted like that much. Someone's gonna do a counter of like all eight times that he's fainted. Eight shouldn't be the, like, the amount, considering, like, I I'm even gonna look this up. keep mixing up friendship and happiness as well, but, uh, yeah, so, Gen 2, friendship, uh, 
So all Pokemon have a base friendship of 70. What did I say? What did I say? Hold on. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it was so close, bro. <laughs> His face. His face is like, he's so judgmental. Your bad bad evolved into a crowbat. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, but... <laughs> um, but yeah, I... I just want to, like, note that, um... I covered my- I took my right headphone off, and then I panicked a little bit because I didn't hear anything just then. <laughs> because that all plays out the right. He evolves my head and he looks sad now. Exactly, so, um... <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so for- yeah, for reference, all Pokemon start at 70 happiness, the stat goes up to 255. Uh, I don't know when exactly evolution by... Happiness kicks in. I'm thinking it's a hundred and... 180, I think? I'm not too sure, actually. Um, uh... But, uh... You can do some things to increase its, uh, friendship, I believe. Actually, it might be 220. It might be really high. Um, that you need it. Uh, but if you level it up, um... It will gain five happiness, uh, and then three happiness later down the line, and then two. But I was like, okay, that's a bit. Uh, if you battle against a gym leader with it, it immediately gains uh, plus three, plus two, or plus one. Uh, again, depending on its category. But it's like, okay, having him in uh, gym fights is there. Uh, yeah, you can give him a haircut. That's plus three or plus one. Um, and then this is just one casually as well. Every 512 steps that you take with someone in your party, they will gain one happiness. Uh, learn a TM. That's plus one. I don't think I ever used that. Um, and then here's the thing. Fainting. If, uh, if the opponent is less than 30 levels above you, you lose one friendship point. No matter what, it's one singular friendship point. It's not very, not very significant. Uh, if the Pokemon, if the opponent is very, very strong, apparently it's a significant drop, but that's never happened in this. Um, it also drops, uh, a fair bit of, uh, friendship if you use, uh, Energy Powder, Heal Powder, Energy Root, or Revival Herbs, like, a very significant amount, like, it says using a Revival Herb at, like, the top tier is a minus 20, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, that's kind of crazy. Um, oh yeah, yeah, sorry, haircuts can actually be, um, uh, plus 10 as well, like, you could do that as well, but... I, I've been feeling like, oh, I've been using, you know, Golbat this whole game. Like, at some point he needed to evolve, and I guess just conveniently now is the point, but... Like, yeah, I <laughs> I didn't expect him to, you know, take this late to evolve, so it had to have happened very soon. Uh, when you hair your Pokemon every day, just for evolution, so your Togeta could ball them out. <laughs> you gotta watch out, bro. Have you had daily haircuts, man? That's kind of crazy, like, oh, don't, doesn't your hair only grow, like, a centimeter a day? Probably less than that, because, like, it's been, <laughs> it's been, like, four and a half months since I've got my last haircut, and, uh, I can guarantee my hair is not a meter long yet. Might be, like, three inches, so, I don't know, actually. <laughs> Maybe not a centimeter a day. Millimeter a day sounds more correct. I have quarantine haircuts, I only passed the machine on level two and done. Dude, I wonder if we're gonna have like self self-serve haircut machines like pretty soon. Kill this barber's out of a job. And for your Togetic hair. Eh, hey, I we all want that Togetic that Togetic shade, you know? That's all, all we care about. That's all we need. Chiki's probably got pretty close to the Togetic shade. Chiki's got the, you know, the drip, right? The, not the drip. The drip is the, the outfit. Uh, so anyways, I'm doing just a little bit of fighting because I legitimately don't trust <laughs> my levels. Um, so my goal is to try and get everyone just up to 35. 
Uh, it's pretty good. I was paying eight bucks. I had to make a haircut every month. And I paid fifteen for a machine that will serve me at least for a year. I feel like that there's definitely like some cheaper haircuts out there. I've been going to the same guy for like my whole life, and he charges like thirty-eight dollars. It's just Australian, so the exchange rate is probably more close to the words like thirty US if you include tax. Um, I also only go every three months, so actually like. The the rate is probably not a, not that much worse than yours, but um, but yeah, like I find that's actually kind of crazy about uh, oh eight euros. That's probably about the same, actually. That's probably about the same. It it's it's probably a lot. Sorry, it it's probably a lot of money. But the fact that I go every three months instead of one month um, is probably balancing it out because I I I don't go tons often. Um, like, I let my hair grow out a fair bit, and then cut it to be very short. Uh, so people people know... Three dollars for a haircut? That's what I love about, like, hairdressers, is that, like, they can charge whatever the heck they want, really. And, uh, eight euros is 9.4 American dollars. Um, I'm in Australia, so it probably translates to, like, 11 Australian or something like that. 11 or 12, actually. Um... But yeah, like, 200 rubles. Okay, not- not rubles. I don't- I don't use rubles over here. <laughs> Almost 13 stream? Okay, yeah. And then- and then, yeah, multiply that by three, because I'm going every three months, and that actually probably translates to exactly the same amount. I don't know if my hairdresser's gonna charge the same amount once he's able to open and actually, like, start cutting people's hair again. Um, but, uh, we'll see. I like the guy. I'd pay more. It's expensive, but it's not fair to compare the conversion rates. Yeah, I mean, the cost of labor is generally just, like, so much higher in Australia as well. Like, I think you're not going to find someone giving a, a, a $13 haircut in Australia. I, I just don't see it. You might see down to 20 definitely, but not 13 um, Nothing stops you, I guess, from pulling out a pair of scissors yourself as well, which... Yeah, that's the fun part about, like, hairdressers, is that they can charge whatever they want, and you can just go, yeah, nah, I'm going somewhere else. Like, there's so many, like, places to get your hair cut, so it's, it's, a. Uh... But it's definitely, like, it's very a luxury. In, in Brazil, I used to pay 15 Brazilians, so it was less than 4 Australian dollars. Yeah, I mean, it's, like... I mean, it, it's, it's a product of the income, because I'd say the average income in Australia... Like, the GDP per capita is reasonably higher um, than a lot of other countries. So, therefore, the, the, a lot of services will just charge more because people are generally just making more money. Um, like, you can't, you can't charge more for bread, per se, but you can definitely go, hey, like, this is a bit more of a luxury thing. In Brazil, Nintendo switches three salaries. In Portugal, it's half a salary. Like annual salaries, because that's that's crazy. If that's like embrace cut return to ice age, <laughs> I, I definitely uh, like Brazil. Like really monthly salary. Oh, jeez, monthly. Ugh. Minimum. Uh, what's the minimum in Australia? Is it? It's eighteen dollars twenty something. Per hour, uh, let's say you work 40 hours, 38 hours a week, because that's, that's our thing, um... I'm pulling that out from the calculator, because I, I can't do 18 times 38. That's 684, you're probably going to lose a bit to tax, but a Nintendo Switch here is $470, so you probably could afford that in a week if you didn't spend it on anything else in Australia, so... Yeah, definitely, we've got a really high minimum wage, though. I'll definitely say that, like, 18 bucks is, um, like, I, I, I hear stories in the US of, like, how, uh, hundreds, yeah, like, I, I don't understand, um, like, Brazilian, well, the Brazilian economy in terms of, like, how 
consumer things and sorry not consumer things but like th things that are technically luxuries like having a nice computer is more a luxury like you don't you don't exactly need a computer um you know to, to live per se but like the fact that so many of these like luxury electronics are so darn expensive over there like i i don't understand how how that happens um i feel like chicky is gonna get a lot of love right now it's got a lot of cheap things, yeah, okay. That balances out. In, in the same way that, like, I, I was saying a haircut costs a lot over here, but then it's like, well, because the average person can pay a lot more for a haircut than, than down there, so some things just inevitably do have to be cheaper, and some things are inevitably gonna, you know, be more expensive. Um, I think the other thing with Brazil as well um, is uh, they do a lot of uh, import tax, don't they? The price is a dollar base. Everything that is Brazil based is cheap. Yeah, yeah, they do a lot of like conversion tax and, and import tax in Brazil, um, which I guess it would be great to, you know, to encourage people to invent their own computers in Brazil, but it's really hard to do that. Like the only other country that I know of that's trying to out outdo US based silicon is, um, or US based silicon design is uh, China right now and they're, they're getting there but they like they're on a roadmap to replace the computers with uh, Chinese design ones and not like you know they're not there yet although uh, I forgot the name of the company but they, they've actually got like a surprisingly like competent base product for um, you know, that, that is using a Chinese, a completely Chinese made CPU that runs on x86. Um, at least I, is it x86? I think it's x86. So, Bitcoin finding and silicon prices together cheap. Yeah, I, like, I mean, e even over here, uh, companies, uh, yeah, I, I, I think there's a degree of like, you know, do companies want to be in China right now? I, I don't really know, and I'm not I'm not going to get too too diving into the political scene because um, I I really particularly don't know how U.S. versus China in terms of like you know the large corporate private space is really working. Um, but I definitely feel like the there's there's a lot of tension. I think there's that. I think the cheaper labor for factories and um, yeah, re really just labor. So there's, there's a lot of machining. That's why, um, you know, like the CSMC, which is, I know it's in Taiwan, but it's close enough, okay? Um, they just now spend more money on salaries. Um, yeah. Yeah, there, there's definitely that. Like, I guess that's the biggest thing is that, you know, as, as things become more automated, is there any reason to be doing them in the countries with cheap labor. Isn't that ironic? The best way to keep American jobs is to not have American... is to not have jobs in the, at all. That's a bit of a weird one. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, the, um, the Bitcoin farming, like, I keep eyeing it here and there. It, the market is, is, like, starting to... Uh, saturate's not the word, but definitely to fill in more with, um, supply as people are, you know, offloading some old GPUs. Uh, China's obviously, they've outruled, they've outlawed, uh, Bitcoin mining, so this prudent genius plan, how uh, we can get back to superpower. Um, yeah, like, ignoring any historical notes of Russia, I would love for there to be, you know, that's a bit of a weird one, but I, I, I would love to, to not think of, you know, the world as, like, only two big superpowers. Like, having multiple equally as competing superpowers not try and not trying to annihilate each other, I know. Um, I feel like that's probably alright, because, you know, when the US and the China do agree on something and get together on something, it's like, oh, but, like, I mean, yeah, it can benefit some things, but, you know, you don't want to... Don't want to, you know, uni-nationalize things between two of the two biggest countries like that. So, uh, you have to become poor to become rich. You gotta stop capitalism. It's it's tough. It's a tough call. 
I think it's it's generally led to a lot of great things. I, I've got nothing against capitalism. I think that there's a certain, like, class divide that does need to be addressed. Because there's definitely, like, the poor are getting richer, but the rich are getting ultra richer. And that's, like, that's not a concern in the sense of, like, you know, I think the poor people, you know, lower class will be content with the quality of life getting richer, but... There will be a point where, like, they own so little of the world that they stop having a voice. And at that point, that's some dangerous stuff. Uh, and, yeah, I, like, I guess the trouble is, is that if it's not capitalism, what do you replace it with? Uh, oh, the chat has fallen off. I apologize for that. That is not, uh, getting cut off because of, uh, chat. I gotta really fix it, I swear. There we go. Alright, chat's reset. Colors are gonna look so weird on screen. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm really devil's advocate when it comes to like really any any more serious discussions. So I, I do try to look for the benefits in in all sides uh, and not really try and lean on too much of a opinion. Um, I've definitely got some opinionated things, but I'll definitely say when it comes to the degree of like, you know, like. Uh, what's the best way to run things, and I'm kind of like, I've got no idea, and if I was in charge, I would <laughs> distribute my, like, importance to so many other people such that my power doesn't really mean, mean much. Uh, making a joke, I don't really have a nice education when it comes to politics. You don't, you don't particularly need an education to have, I guess, like, a view on something. I think there's, there's a degree on, like, sorry, th 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 there's a... I think there's a point where CI Hack is trying to break this communist chat. Oh, maybe, maybe. I mean, hopefully they don't come in on me. I'm, I'm Australian, bro. This is my my Australian stream, okay? There's one thing we can't talk about here, and that's bagging on the Queen, okay? And everything else, fair game, fair dinkum, as they say. This grinding is really taking its time, isn't it? Because I need to still beat the, the um, Elite Four in this stream. Jeez. Alright, well, that's one down. So, uh... Uh, I'm probably gonna swap in for No One Boy to do, like, some of the remaining, um... I guess, like, fighting. Because all these people are still weak to water as well. Yeah, 35 is going to be a very interesting level to, to beat things at. Uh, they arrested Turkish official in Austria. Oh, did they? I haven't looked into um, what's going on there, but... There's definitely a lot of crazy things happening in, really, I guess, in all of the political world right now. Um, and no matter where you are as well, like, even if you're not, you know... E even if it's not involving the US, it's like, there's some crazy things going on. Uh, are you sure you're safe? Um, oh, for me? Not at all, man. Like, not, not a, like the government's gonna arrest me thing, but like, uh, <laughs> crazy, crazy world space. I'm like, you know, I, I do not trust anyone but myself to keep myself safe right now. And I feel like I'm doing as best a job I can. And hopefully... Hopefully I get left alone enough that things return to a quiet state. I try- I'm not- I'm not wanting to mess in anyone's- anyone's world, as long as you don't mess in mine. That's- that's my- that is my <laughs> strong worldview right there. The kangaroos have already left for you. Oh my gosh. They don't send kangaroos, that's- that's federal police. They send the drop bears in New South Wales. <laughs> It's definitely, like, at least here in Australia, there's some... Uh, it's funny that Portugal TV, there are very few Australian shows. My wife watches Marin at First Sight a lot. And we saw these days uh, Ninja War as well. There are a couple others. Dude, I'm surprised Marin at First Sight does get as much attention as it does uh, federal business. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm actually surprised, like, the number of Australian TV shows. Uh, do you get, like, sitcoms? Like, do you get, um... 
his neighbors still going on or is home and away still going on? one of them i know i know like some of our sitcoms do go pretty far i'm surprised uh married at first sight i would have imagined that's a very like national show i don't i don't really know of the international um i guess reach of that but yeah if you're getting married at first sight and ninja warrior that's actually pretty cool um interesting anomaly in russia You don't have drop bears in Russia, do you? The 10 year rule. I, I, I love how it's the 10 year rule and not the decade rule as well. Like, you gotta highlight the fact that it's not one, not two, but 10 wonderfully long years. I have a confession, I'm scared to visit Australia. As in, like, this this very point in time, everything comes from the West with a delay of 10 years. Uh, that used to kind of be the, the thing here. We used to be a bit late when it came to importing things. We'd get game consoles, like, um, months after, like, Europe, and then Europe would get them months after the US. So we'd actually be pretty late. We got, like, um, I, I guess a, a big no is that we got something like Pokemon Diamond Pearl, like, a month after the US, despite the internet being readily available. Uh, I saw a news guy got bit, bitten on the, the dingling for the second time on this job. There are, like, some weird horror stories you'll hear about Australia when it comes to, like, getting bitten by animals. If you're in, like, suburban areas or the city, um, no risk. Like, well, maybe not no, but it, like, I don't come across animals. Spiders, it's like, I've not had a massive spider come in uh, a building of mine in a while. It definitely, they, I did get like a few here and there, but spiders are like, spiders are surprisingly like, non, well, they're defensive. So if you don't go and mess the spider, they will not come and mess with you. You'll never have spiders climbing on you because they're very good at going, hey, this is a large hot thing. I'm not going anywhere near that. And they will mind their own business, they will hide in a corner, they'll wander around the wall, but they'll be like, yo, I'm not going down on the ground. So don't worry about spiders. If you're outside, uh, make sure they're not in bushes. Like, definitely don't accidentally try and step on one, but... Uh, you said the first time people were all concerned about his well-being. Um, I mean, the second time's a charm, you know? Uh, also, let me just play to the rest of the chat. The chat's going quick. Uh, so they closed that first Disney Channel only in 2005 when the whole world, uh, in 2000. Oh. Oh, with the 10-year rule where things came in late. Yeah, it's... Like, it... When it comes to, like, media, or, or like, I guess, like, technology, I can understand, like, how the 10-year rule comes in. There's so much, like, topical media right now. Like, and I, I, I'm not just saying, like, politics, but, like, a lot of, like... Um, and I guess the, the obvious thing is, like, look at your your Disney channels and your kind of kids shows from 10 years ago. They are wildly different to how they are now, and they were 10 years before that and 10 years before that. It's crazy how, like, how much, like, cultural evolution is happening in, like, TV shows like stuff. Uh, sat in the toilet to dump and forgot to wash the seat. Uh, yep. Uh, so Spider, wait until there is more air on the Earth. And I will become the size of your house and the value. Um, yeah, I mean... Yeah, I'd probably say if spiders became, like, incredibly sentient and... Well, I guess they're sentient, but you know what I mean, like... You know, to the level that they can communicate and comprehend, uh, human, I guess, concepts like that. Um... Yeah, once they get to that point, they're probably gonna hate me because I've definitely killed a lot of spiders with the... with the raid. Time to kill trees? <laughs> we burn way too many trees down here. I'll, I will say that, um, like, if you do come to, at least in Sydney, get used to, like, you know, systematically trying to control the wildlife border such that it doesn't, like, because it is going to, you know, burn at some point. So we do control burning, and you just get that smell coming in, but, like, yeah, besides spiders, there's a lot of poisonous Pokemon in Australia and giant bats and stuff. Uh, well, poisonous is, means that you can't eat it, so that's okay. Uh, forest. But yeah, no, no, legit, we, we burn trees such that they don't grow too close and burn us down eventually. 
I think... I don't, I don't know how much, uh, no ever bugs. <laughs> um, I don't know how much of, like, Australian news you got. I remember, or you, you get, um, but, like, yeah, about two years ago we were getting, like, all those bushfires. Was it two years ago? Maybe it was at the beginning of this year, actually. It's been forever. Um, I don't remember it being the beginning of this year. It must have been last year. And we got, like, some terrible bushfires, and we just, like, happens, like, every, like, 10, 15 years. Uh, that might be a TV concept, but there's a concept that arrives from media, so don't worry, we took your ideas. I'm trying to think, what what is a TV show where it's like, in a war against like animals, we just made the Earth uninhabitable? <laughs> Four million uh, guy guitars of Siberia burning. Give me the juice. Extinguish only one. Yeah, it's. Like, controlled burning is kind of interesting, because it's like, it's not necessarily a natural process, but it's also like, you know, we kind of have to do it in order to, to live here, so. I would love to visit Australia for beautiful places, I'm just scared, uh, so it's down on my to-do list. Um, I'll definitely say, like, as long as you're not, like, going way out into the wilderness, you will not come across too many wild animals. Uh, like, Australia, like most, uh, most, I guess, like, urbanized areas, like, just the wildlife is not too... They don't get into city affairs too much, so... 30 villages just burned to the ground. Ah, oh, jeez, man. Jeez. Yeah, that, like, I wouldn't say be afraid, um, be very, I guess, as a tourist, be very concerned about the climate, because you're going to get absolutely thrown off by the fact that everything is opposite side of the year down here. You used to live in Brazil, or I guess, unless you're in Brazil, in which case you actually might be getting the same climate, so it's actually not, not too bad. Um, that, that's one thing that throws a lot of people off when they come down here, is that suddenly, like, it's summer. Or, or, I guess, if you come down here right now, and it's it's winter, it's cold. It's just like, oh, okay. Um, it's also some creepy stuff near the woods as well. Jeez. Crocodile on the street? Mind your business, me? Oh my gosh. Dude, I'd be terrified if, like, animals could, like, communicate, but they've got, like, that very, like, primitive, like, I guess, like, mindset in the sense of, like, literally, the crocodile exists just to eat and grow big and then procreate. <laughs> like, that's, that's the whole point of the crocodile and that's all he cares about and he's gonna do his job and he's gonna tell you to, to you know, bugger off if you're not, if you're not gonna help him do what he, uh, do what he wants. Which, to a crocodile, uh, yeah, you being close to him makes his job easier. Bro, this crocodile is a joke about Australia. Um, yeah, I don't, like, we don't particularly get wild crocodiles, um, you know, like, you, usually when someone, you know, gets attacked by a crocodile, and it does happen, like, more regularly than it should, uh, but usually when someone gets attacked by a wild crocodile in Australia, they're usually at where a crocodile lives, um, so, uh, I, I don't imagine wild crocodiles come up, like, into urban areas that much. I think it it's definitely happened, but... For instance, I was riding a little boat in the river in Brazil and got spooked by a crocodile near the boat. I guess a lot of people do come across crocodiles, especially if you are riding on a, on a river. So yeah, no, definitely that's... Looks like it's starving. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they gotta eat somehow. Just... <laughs> Preferably don't make it you. Um, humans are not very tasty meat. There's a lot of snakes though. I think most are not poisonous. Um, in Australia? Uh, it's a kind of... You do get told, and especially if you have like a backyard or have like a significant like garden area, you do need to like be mindful of the existence of snakes. Um, but yeah, it, it is, it is true, like, not a lot of snakes will, like, kill you. Um, and actually, I, I really thank my physics teacher on this one, like, um, <laughs> like, my physics teacher gave me a lot of life advice in high school. 
love him. Uh, but he said, like, if you ever see a snake, just, like, stop. Because snakes are, like, blind and dumb. Blind, deaf, and dumb. They react to you moving really quick, and they, like, really instinctively will react to attacking something moving quickly near it. Uh, they will... If you stop still, they will do the same thing that the spiders do, which is they will see that you are massive, they know they can't eat that, and they hope that they didn't, you know, alert you. Uh, uh, so when you just not have a cho- how do you know the taste of human? Um, that's for you to find out and for me to know. Uh, preferably, uh, <laughs> it's not an animal. Nah, but like, I'm pretty sure, like, I don't know, in like chemistry class, I remember we like discussed like the the cooking potential of meats, and then we kind of were like, yeah, like humans don't have a lot of meat on them. They've got like a bit on the stomach, but it's like um like chickens are bulky as, cows are bulky as, pigs are incredibly bulky. Humans, they're rather lean. Like you can feel bone quite easily on on humans in a lot of places. Uh, the Komodo dragon. Um, Komodo dragons are amazing. You will not, you will not accidentally come across a Komodo dragon. You do have to really like go out and find them. But they're absolutely amazing. Like, um, and I, I find like animals that are larger than us is just like that's crazy. That you know, nature do be like that. But like, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Komodo dragons are like three meter long lizards. They exist. They're massive. It's crazy cool. If you ever see one, I don't know if you'll ever find one at a zoo, but if you do... This is starting to take its sweet time, me, me leveling up these, these guys. How about I take a stab? I'm gonna take a stab, bro. I'm gonna take a stab. I know, I know Herc is low level, but Herc is also like amazingly cool in stats. Um, but how about I be... I'll be generous and I'll give him the... Uh, the experience share, because I don't really think I can give him anything else. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, I w <laughs> Good evening, it's me, oh, I'm gonna value, I'm not gonna repeat, I'm gonna rather buzz you. Um, yeah, that, definitely, I wish, I wish some of these massive animals were domesticated enough such that you could give them hugs. Um, but I also am like, yeah, nah, like, <laughs> They're cool to look at them and see what they do and how they work out and that's that's cool But I'm I'm not gonna give a Komodo dragon a hug um, I still say that my my ultimate pet would be like a tortoise um, But I don't think tortoises are gonna like particularly like being in a Australia uh, By an action figure not the real deal. Yeah Or print one. Yeah, exactly yeah, I, I don't think tortoises are gonna like the Australian climate very much, so... Honey badger? I don't know if we can get honey badgers here. Uh, I'm just gonna check my box. I don't think I've got particularly many items beyond the, the charcoal to really, like, help me out. Uh, sharp beak for flying stuff? Well, I might as well. I might as well get that for the wing attacks. And then... There's the charcoal. There's nugget, protein, amulet, coin, like, I don't really think any of these other items are going to particularly help me, so... Let's take a stab! Uh, sharp beak, give it to... Babat. And then charcoal, give it to... Hot doggo. So I don't have anything for chicky or... Uh... Or fluffer, but... It's worth a try. It's worth a try. I've been talking too much about Komodo dragons. So, let's give it a go. Hot Doggo's gonna have- I think Hot Doggo is probably gonna have the hardest time. That's gonna be the worst part. So, here we go. I am not gonna resave. I'm just gonna commit. I'm just gonna keep going. I will! I have trained all around the world making my psychic type Pokemon. I didn't even put anyone useful up front. Nice. Losing is not an option. Lance does have level 50 Dragonite, that is true. And on top of that, I don't have any ice type attacks. So I'm gonna, I'm really gonna struggle on Lance. Uh, but let's start off. First Elite Four person is Will here. Will is a Psychic type 
Uh, trainer, starting off with Zatu, knows Quick Attack, Future Sight, Psychic, and Confuse Ray. I... yeah, I wish I had gone out with Fluff at the start off. Um, I'm gonna be so out-leveled, this is crazy. Confuse Ray is also gonna, like, you know, meme on me really hard. Um, but yeah, Psychic type is, like, it's one type that I just don't have anything, like, too consistent against. Um, Ironically, I don't even think I've got anything that consistent against anything, so Psychic is gonna ruin my day. You can level- you can level up on them. Gen 3 after this? Not directly after this, but I would consider it, yeah. And that goes Fluffer, so... That was partially of my own doing, because I didn't really have a plan going into this, but I'm also like... Who else do I go in with? Uh... Because I'm going to need Hot Doggo for two of them. Uh, so I think No One Boy is probably going to be the best bet at this very second. Um, he doesn't know any flying type attacks. So I'm not completely stuffed uh, for, uh, I guess, like... Oh, oh, that's such a lot of damage. I think I am absolutely screwed anyways. <laughs> Because it's like, I mean, I know he's level 40 and I'm level 34. It's only going to get worse. Revive the Ampharos, I think. There are two Zartus as well. It'll be funny if you're going to die on one Pokemon. Uh, I definitely think I've, I've cheesed it before, but... Uh, there's the one next revive, but I'm just going to commit with the actual revive that I've got. And I'm going to move it down the bottom. Just so I've got it there. There we go. Pop it in. Get Flopper back out. Uh, the alternative strat, and I've sometimes done this, is I spam my revives so much that they don't have the ability to... Oh, I can commit with a poison power. Uh, use my revive so much that they run out of PP. Uh, in this case, Psychic. Psychic has... 15 PP, doesn't it? Or is it 10? I'm pretty sure it's 15. It's not... It is 10! Okay. So I could just sit here long enough. Uh, they also have full resource. They do have full resource. They don't have elixirs. They will never have elixirs. See, yeah, I could switch to Fluffer, but I'm gonna encounter the exact same problem I just did, so I'm actually gonna... just tank it. Just, just commit. Uh... Yeah, but, eh. <laughs> I wanted to, like, attempt before the end of this, you know, part. Just try and go, like, hey, can I fight them? I don't think Fluffer is at all an appropriate level. I just, I... Eh. And yeah, like, I could send Hot Doggo, but, like... Uh, because that would have bought me one turn. So I would have spent one turn using a heal, and then used another turn to revive. Uh, Chad again, yeah. Chad's, Chad's gonna heal on Ampharos. Uh, hold on, let me, let me fix the chat first. Uh, there you go. Alright, it's reset. You know one thing that's kind of annoying? The poison powder doesn't kick- sorry, the poison doesn't kick in on a... Yeah... I... I don't feel like- I don't feel comfortable in taking any of the rest of this, to be honest. Uh... Like, I guess Babat is bound to be fast enough. Yeah, I... I'm amazed that, like, this Zatu is, like, kicking my butt this hard. I don't think I'm gonna have as much an issue on, really, any of the rest of the Elite Four. Um, partially because of type, because the other types we've got to deal with is Poison, which is three out of five Bug, so I actually can <laughs> kind of cheese that Bug is a lot of it. Uh, and Fighting, which I've got Flying, but also Fighting isn't gonna wreck anything of mine. Thanks for the follow, by the way. Uh, and, uh, and then Dark Type, which... Again, I've got, uh... Boy, no. I've got, uh, fighting. No, I don't. I don't have anything. So, 
Uh, I also was not pay paying attention to what he's got. Jinx. Uh, forgot to follow earlier. Ah, yeah. Um. Yeah, so I could use a revive on Hot Doggo. Uh, be able to put food in the oven. Yeah, like. Alright, so this Jinx. For reference, everything in this team knows Psychic. I don't think I can get around that in any way. So, this Jinx knows Ice Punch, Double Slap, Psychic, and Lovely Kiss. It's just gonna spam Psychic. Everything in his team is going to spam Psychic. And, they're mostly faster than me, and I can't do anything about it with Hot Doggo, yeah? Oh, it... I don't think that's a plan. I don't think there's a... there's a way. He is too strong. It's... I... Oh! That hurts. That actually does hurt, that like... Whatever I had like, intended is just like... It's got no... no way of getting around all of this use of Psychic, because I've got... Well, my two fastest Pokémon are weak to Psychic. So... So, I, I know, I know... It's like... You know, you don't lose a ton of money if you, if you die. But I'm also like, I just fought one. I beat one of the Pokémon. Uh, so... I did, I did rush a little bit. I did kind of go like, hey, maybe, maybe I can take a stab. Um, because I wanted to at least, like, take a, take a stab before, um, you know, before I hit my two minute, two hour, like, whatever, but, jeez, man, jeez. I think, I think one of my biggest issues is I've got Fluffer way too low level, and Fluffer is supposed to be the one to take out Zatu there. He blasts you in the sky like Team Rocket. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, Fluffer is supposed to be the one to take out Zatu there. Um, because, yeah, no one else on my team really has anything to, to best that. What is Zatu's speed? I'm, just, I'm gonna look this up as well. Uh, so for reference, Psychic, by the way, the, the move is, uh... Uh, it's a 90 power. Uh, special attack move? Oh, no, it's special attack, because it's psychic in this game. 100% accuracy, 10 PP, so it's not great. Uh, look for, look for a good TM. I've got Earthquake. I don't really know if anyone on my team could have had the opportunity to use Earthquake. Like, there's bound to be TMs that I'm holding onto that are pretty good, and I'll actually, I'll scan by the list of TMs that I've got right now, just so that you've got an idea of, like, what I can teach right now. Uh, so, Dynamic Punch, Roll Out, Hidden Power, Icy Wind, Iron Tail, Dragon Breath, Earthquake, Dig, Shadow Ball, Mud Slap, Swagger, Sleep Talk, Sandstorm, Swift, Detect, Rest, Attract, Thief, Fury Cutter, Nightmare, and then the HM, so Cut, Fly, Surf, Strength, Flash, Whirlpool, Waterfall. I don't really see anything on that list, like, really making me faster. Mate, yeah, Shadow Ball can be alright. Um, actually, I can te teach the Crobat now, because Crobat's got a different moveset to Golbat. Um, so I probably could. Uh, I'm gonna take suggestions, I'm not gonna commit on anything, because I've got no plan, no hopes of beating the, uh, Elite Four this, uh, this, um, stream. That's, that's mildly disappointing, and also I think someone's gonna go, hey, you love Pokemon Gold Silver so much, you didn't have to grind in, uh, first gen, and I was like, yeah, I guess. You can't? Can he learn in later gens? I think he can learn in, la in later gens. He definitely, he can learn it in gen 3, but he can't learn it in gen 2. So, the one move that I think he can get that would be amazing uh, to use is, um... Possibly Steel Wing. He's not going to gain anything through leveling that's worthwhile anymore, so it's worth just giving him TMs. Um, but yeah, his moveset is like, I mean, once he learns Wing Attack, like, it's only that and Fly, and I prefer Wing Attack over Fly as a as a regular move. Um, still Wing uh, might be okay. The Psychic Dude usually have double-type Pokemon, so you can get... Yeah, so, uh, like, with, um, with the, the Zatu there, um... Yeah, yeah, like, I, I probably can wing, steel wing, yeah. Um, 
I think my issue is that, yeah, my Ampharos is one, so low level, and two, not fast anyways. Um, so yeah, looking at Zatu's stats, uh, Zatu has speed of 95 and also a special attack of 95. Uh, you need to beat all the Elite Four in Kano and go to the mountain with red. Uh, I mean, that's, that's very prospective, because I need to, I need to do the first part first. Um, so yeah, I've got, for reference, Lance is gonna be tough though, he is the Elite Five-ish. Yeah, I mean, that's, that is the one thing. Um, oh yeah, he just learns Earthquake casually. Yeah, sure, actually. Um, yeah, instead of Tower. <laughs> that's a move I've been waiting for for a bit. Okay, right. well that, that'll help in like some, some regard, because that's the other nice thing, is that like, uh, he's got Slam, and he's got a much higher physical attack, uh, but having Earthquake is like, hey, here's a stab move that, like, you know, plays towards his physical stat, it's great, it's great. Um, here's the thing as well, I, I mentioned earlier in the stream that I get, uh, that stat, sorry, that, um, power boost on all moves that are of the type of gyms that have happened in the past. Uh, so that would be flying, bug, normal, uh, ghost, fighting, steel, ice, dragon. Um, so that does mean that if anything is of those types, I get a bit of a bit of a boost. I know you can buy ice punch and golden rod. Uh, who on my team can learn ice punch? Can Ampharos learn ice punch? No, I can buy Ice Punch. Uh, I'm just curious. Quagsire. Oh, it teaches Quagsire. Oh, it's like a catch all Ice type attack. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty balanced. So, I, like, there's not really any one Pokemon that is gonna, like, absolutely sweep unless I was to catch a legendary. So, Quagsire learning Ice Punch. Oh, that's actually that's a pretty interesting take on it. Is it? That's a surprising amount of Pokemon that can learn Ice Punch as well, but yeah, there it is, Quagsire. Um, that'd be kind of interesting. It does mean I ditch Amnesia, but I... It does mean I would ditch Amnesia, unless I get rid of Slam, like I commit to Earthquake being my physical attack. It's tempting, it is tempting. Uh, because, like, Totodile, there are a few physical water attacks now, and there are stronger bug moves. That is true. That is true. Like, having having water is for type coverage, but it's not necessarily for playing on the strengths. His, his special attack stat is not as high as other water types um, close to come to mind. Um, actually, is close to special attack high? No, it's a special defense, isn't it? It was first gen, I was playing on first gen being a fun game last last time. Um, so yeah, I could teach you my sponge. I'm gonna write that down. I'm oh, not that one. Meganium can learn Earthquake. That is true as well. I, I've definitely, um... But I also Heracross can learn Earthquake. So, I've only got one Earthquake. So I'm curious where I will put Earthquake. I'd prefer putting Earthquake on the Sweeper. Um... Which is it's not it's not power cross necessarily, but I prefer putting earthquake on something more aggressive, and then putting something that's more passive. Uh, on something like gold bag gives good XP. You surf on them, okay? shame that like I'm just nowhere near the level. I, I think some of it is because yeah I did try and train Shuckle and Shuckle is up to level like 32 so I can in some ways sub him out if I really wanted to but I don't really know man. I've, I've come at this with not really much of a strategy and I feel like uh, leveling up and Hot Doggo is just... I guess Hot Doggo is not really gaining any, any moves. I guess no one's gaining any moves because I didn't put the experience share on anyone. Gosh. Who's the smart cookie? It's not me. Who's got the... Who's 
about the experience share? Am I blind? Do I miss it? Power cross it. What? I'm blanking out. I'm blanking out hard. Uh, I think Slam will do more damage because Quagsire is more physical and Golbat has more special defense. Yeah. Megane, I'm gonna learn Light Screen on uh, level 41. Yeah. Wait. Slam, I miss. Yeah, that that as well. Like that's that's my one thing with Slam. I would. Can he learn Body Slam? I prefer Body Slam as a more reliable attack. Slam's got the PP, but I don't know if it's necessarily got the... Um... What TM I search? Uh, I haven't searched any yet, really. Is no one boy about to get, like... I was looking for my experience share. Because <laughs> I, I didn't know, I was like, who's getting the experience share? Body Slam is an egg move. I know! Oh. Also, I... By the way, I've blanked out so hard why Quagsire keeps moving before my opponent sometimes, and that's because he's got the Quick Claw, and I just forgot that there's no animation for it in this game. I don't know if Slam's necessarily doing more damage. Uh, you need to go to this dude who gave you egg. Um, like, yeah, I, I can see the, the breed, but... The... Yeah... I can understand breeding. I don't know why I just went into yet another fight. I kind of I don't want to like breed into something after getting like this far because that's just gonna add like more playtime. Oh, well, rip no arm boy. No friendship for you. No friendship for you. Um, you need to go to this dude who gave you the egg. He gives you the experience share. I've already got the experience share. It's on Heracross. I, I lost track of who I gave it to. I, I, I don't not have the experience share. <laughs> nah, I, I'd, I'd be kicking myself if I didn't have the experience share. But, uh, um, yeah, I can't think of really any other moves on Quagsire that would like be particularly good. Except for, yeah, I guess Ice Punch and get that Ice Coverage. Which, I'm going to need the Ice Coverage. I don't think there's any way of getting, getting through Lance without um, having at least a solid move set that's not suffering from his types, and having water type on this thing, uh, Fluffer having only electric type, uh, Meganium having only grass type, and Growlithe not having a solid, uh, he can learn Rollout, I don't know if I trust Rollout. He is bulky, I guess Rollout could be more, you know, more useful than the average Pokemon, but I don't, I don't know. party Nintendo 64 control. Hey, that's good stuff. Is it one of those third party controllers that you don't have to like awkwardly grip on both sides? Because that's those I I'm not a big fan of the original N64 controllers because of that. I just think like you can you can redesign it, put the buttons in convenient spots, and just call it a day. There's something nice about the original N64 controller, but uh use of space is not necessarily one of them. A retro bit wireless. Ooh. USB switch third party controller. Ooh. I used to have like really bad run-ins with third party controllers. Um, I either break them too often or they just don't feel comfy. Um, I got awkwardly big hands, so I like rip an Xbox One controller. I'm like, oh yeah, like it's it's no sweats. It's just like, I, and I've done this sometimes where it's like I'm holding down the left. Uh, just uh, I, I'll search the retro bit wireless. I don't think you can. Uh, pop links in our chat, but uh, the retro bit wireless uh, is. I think I found the Sega one. But products, controllers, retro bit tribute 64. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a little weird that the D-pad is like right in the middle, but other than that, it's like yeah, that's that seems pretty alright. I love, by the way, I love the, like, the A, B buttons. The buttons on the N64 controller are 
so, like, just girthy. I love it. I should actually get myself one of these, because I do play a lot of N64 games uh, just on the PC, and it'd be very convenient to have a controller that, no, I guess has six buttons like that. Um, alternatively, a uh, uh, more like, I guess, Sega Saturn style controller. Um, but yeah, no analog stick otherwise, so... Uh, so for, for reference to all the people joining, I am probably doing about 10 more minutes of uh, grinding and getting some more levels because I have reached this point in the game. You know what's the worst part as well? I, you completed three gyms in Diamond of the Oh, nice. You, I, by the way, well, I, I was going to say you're considering getting the remake, but I'm like, you're playing through the original. Why get the remake if you're already playing through the original? Um... Uh, nice thing about emulators is that you can emulate your transfer pack and use your Game Boy set. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, there's... There's so much, like, powerful stuff with, with emulators and being able to, like, not have to worry about... Like... And I, I, I know this is, like, one where it's, like, put an asterisk on the legality of stuff like this, but, like, the transfer pack. There are so many interactions between hardware that you need to own that it, it becomes very tough to maintain that nowadays. Like, having being able to completely play Pokemon Stadium, uh, as well as with Parsec, you can even play online. Uh, yeah, uh, Parsec is literally just, it's screen sharing and input uh, sharing. So as in, you can send inputs and you can show, well, stream the video from someone else. So you just need a uh, internet Pokemon trade, one to seven on emulators. Yeah. I think, I think that is, like, possible. I think you are able to transfer Pokemon all the way up to Gen 6 and then do the Pokemon Bank, like, push in. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could use Pika Hex, and the chat is doing its thing again. This is three times in one stream. That is amazing. I'm gonna do a quick reset. Don't die on me. Okay, we're good. Uh, bro, where is the fun in this? Where is the fun in grinding? Not particularly. I honestly, like... My best RPGs, I don't like grinding. Uh, like, all my- oh, 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 and Pika Hex, oh. I- I do- I also agree on that one. I- I don't think- I mean, the existence of Pika Hex, and I guess any say that it means that, you know, either you cheat your way to gaining, you know, ideal strategy things, um, you can pass the virtual console forward. I, yeah, the virtual console can be passed forward. Um, oh yeah, actually, yeah, Gen 3 was a reset. Yeah, you're right, sorry. My bad. I found out you could trade with yourself. Um, I've done, I have actually done a link cable trade uh, with two emulators, by the way. You can you can do, uh, MGBA supports uh, link cables between two instances. And I believe you can do it through RetroArch as well, so. Um, but yeah, no, we've, we've got, um... Oh, you can trade with stuff Gen 1 to 3. Aha! So yeah, I can get Heracross to be a bit stronger, but... Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm gonna have to do a bit more grinding tomorrow. Oh, not tomorrow, but like, the next stream as well. The only problem I think is that Pokemon... Uh, sorry, that Pokemon has is that they won't let you use other region catch Pokemon on ranked matches. Uh, it takes a few months to allow transfer from all the gens, so there's no point in having Pokemon home. I don't know what to do with this Gen 4 to 7. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think one thing is that, uh, people play their Pokemon very strongly to themselves. I'm not too fussed about not being able to transfer Pokemon forward in generations. Um, I think it was more, they did it in the first gen, and then people are going to complain a lot if they don't if they're not able to do it, but I kind of like the idea of, like, the Pokemon I find in my adventure or the Pokemon I find in my adventure. Um, I guess it's also, like, it's a self-inflicted problem because it's, like, by, you know, by all these Pokemon games being a complete the Pokédex thing and then creating new Pokemon games where, and not only do you have to trade between, like, intergeneration, as in, 
you know, I have to buy Pokemon Gold and Silver and then try and catch all of them between the two, but also the fact that there are going to be Pokemon in this game that you just cannot get unless you transfer them from Gen 1. And I think a lot of people are going to look at that and go like, yeah, I, I have to do that at some point, so... Yeah, I can't argue with why people do it. Um, I triplicated my Pokemon Crystal save before choosing starter. I picked a different uh, with each one. I mean, yeah, like, it doesn't take too long to go from the start of the game to being able to trade. So, if you really want to, like, trade starters, then you don't have to go, like, too far from there. Um, but yeah, yeah, the, the one catch is that, uh, yeah, you can't, um... Obviously, you can't have all the starters just by yourself unless you can somehow trade onto yourself. I don't know if the game does... I wonder if the game... No, you can't feedback loop the game against yourself. I don't think there's a... There's a way of, uh, link cabling to yourself. That'd be hilarious. Um... But yeah, uh, no, you'd, you'd need at least like two working, two separate working copies of the game. Uh, or at least some, some machine to facilitate a trade. Um, which... I don't know if it necessarily existed, although I guess Mystery Gift existed in first and second gen, so... I guess it probably did work in some capacity. Dude, first the CIA and now the FBI, man. The FBI's gonna be on to ya. Uh, there is a way how to transfer Gen 2 Pokemon to Gen 3. I have completely blanked on, like, how exactly you do it. DS is unlocked, you can download the backup to your computer and do as you wish. Yeah, yeah, there is that. Save it. Well, pff. you can do anything with a save editor. The other thing with a save editor as well is that you've got to invent, like, details from one game into the other. So Gen 1 to Gen 2, um... Yeah, you gotta... Big X cannot do this. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can, uh, yeah, like, you need two running instances in order to be able to trade with yourself. Um, so if you've got your current, your current save, uh, and your one save, I don't know why I'm running away from these battles. Uh, if you've got your one save, then, um, then you have to, yeah, duplicate it and run it on some, you know, separate thing. I uh, literally transfer Gen 2 and Gen 3 Pokemon. If you're using PK Hex, you're basically kind of transliterating your Pokemon across, which I don't really think is a legitimate mean of mean of transferring Pokemon over. And it's definitely not a way that I guess, like, because you. You do have to invent, like, what, you know, what's your, your Pokemon's nature, I assume there's, uh, there's some other stats, I think there's, like, the personality value or something like that. I think that's a, a, a stat that's not, like, not in second gen, so therefore, a transfer, you'd have to just go, hey, let's roll the dice, let's do a completely random number, and just go with it. Battle Frontier, 100 level Parasect. I love this, like, Confuser as well, with this cool that's got going on. But, alas. Also, here's something curious, I guess. Uh, Growlithe, I, I noted as well. Growlithe uh, learns Flamethrower at level 50. 
I know I'm not going to get Growlithe up to level 50 before the Elite Four. That's, that'd be a bit overkill. But, do you think maybe Growlithe could be level 50 before I, like, even get the Fire Sun? Maybe. That actually might be the case. I might not even, like... That's a bit of a weird one. Uh, this is part of my big adventure with all my Pokemon from Gen 1 to 8. On every eyes. Meanwhile, me, like, doing a bit of a small run-through of the Pokemon games and, like, having the same team between all these games, uh... Purely, purely by the ones that I can catch in all the games, uh, and just constantly re-catching them. Uh, so, yeah, Crobat is one of them. Um, he keeps showing up in all my games. Because, yeah, on Plantel, Sword and Shield, you could catch Crobat, uh, apart from Black and White as well, but... You could catch Crobat in every single game. Or, or Zubat. He's just always there. It's amazing. John and Reddit about trading. Oh my gosh, the chat! Ah! <laughs> Alright, don't copy-paste the whole thing. <laughs> um... I still think I have a Pikachu clone army in this save file. Oh, you've got to be kidding, there's Ursaring going on with a double rest. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, the chat's kind of zoomed in, so like, I can see- actually even- I think it did cut off at some point. Just in the, the Twitch chat, but definitely on my screen it did, because... Yeah. It says you can't transfer from 2 to 3 using cartridges only- Yeah, I, I don't remember, um, having a way of transferring between 2 and 3, because you can't, like, link cable connect between them. Uh, Gengar would dream me to look at this bit. <laughs> Um, but yeah, with the Virtual Console, you can send your, like, with those, the 3DS versions of first and second gens, you can send those Pokemon into Pokemon Bank. Um, I guess that's not necessarily into third gen, but you can technically bring the Pokemon from second gen and first gen forward, uh, just across too many gens like that, so. Uh, anyways, with that, I think that will be, I'll call it there for the, um, the night I'm I'll, I'll finish this uh, I'll, I love virtual console I bought yellow silver crystal yeah I, I, I do just want to finish this this calm over I have old say that the silver being used to turn Pokemon to shiny how can transfer gen 1 to 2 gen 3 yeah, I mean, you can do it with save editors. I'm just saying that, like, save editors are not how, like, it's intended. There's no intentional way of transferring Pokemon between Gens 2 and 3. Uh, only a Virtual Console. Yeah, like, and, and even that Virtual Console doesn't carry it over into Gen 3. It carries it over into Gen 6, which is way down the line. Um, so, uh, or 7? Oh, 7. Okay, <laughs> can't go the whole way. Can't go the whole way. Um... Can you not do it in Gen 6? I thought Gen 6 was compatible with Pokemon, um, Home. Or Pokemon Bank. Oh well. Anyways, with that, I will end the stream. I would like to thank you all for watching and for witnessing me make a absolute fool of myself in trying to fight the Pokemon League with a team of level 32. Uh... But yeah, no, definitely great chat. I love you guys being here, and definitely lively chat is always great. So, um, yeah. Uh, I use... I always kind of plug my YouTube and Twitch. Nah, the spamming's fine. The spamming's fine. It, it pushes me up in the Twitch ratings and puts additional focus on my channel. But, nah, yeah, the, the chat's always good. Next stream's going to be two hours of grind. I don't know if it's, it's going to be the whole two hours. Um, that's a bit unfortunate, because... I, the plan was to kind of work through the trainers and then, like, maybe be good enough. Because when I played first gen, I was, like, my highest level was level 46, and they had level 65s. Um, but, yeah, I've just come so underprepared on this one, so. Oh, well. More, more grinding, bring the levels, win every RPG like that. Anyways, have a good one, everyone. Crazy world out there. 
make make the best that you can.